Well, nobody likes the idea of animals suffering in the name of beauty to test cosmetics, but it's harder to condemn scientists, perhaps, who've used animals to research cures for Alzheimer's or a vaccine against malaria or to develop life support systems to help premature babies to survive. Is animal testing ever justified? Um, and we've got Professor John Stein from Oxford Functional Neurosurgery Group. Come on, John. And you've, you've done uh, <coughs> pioneering, uh, pioneering uh, research on Parkinson's, haven't you? Which has yes. involved animal testing, testing on in, indeed monkeys. Right. What, 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 what did you. What Macaque were you, monkeys. What, yeah, primates. Um, How right. do you feel about uh, uh, that? Like the majority of people in this country, I believe that animal testing is justified for the improvement of medicines and treatments. And what I've done with primates I'm proud of because it has led to many, many, many thousands of people being improved in their lives, not just with Parkinson's disease, but some work that I did in monkeys, understanding how monkeys move their eyes, has helped me to understand children with reading disorders. How, what was done to the monkeys to facilitate you getting that information about how children I was their actually eyes? Um, cooling a part of the brain, no, not painful at all, um, in order to um, cease the functioning temporarily of a part of the brain that we know in humans is important for reading. And what that did was to change the way in which the animals move their eyes. From that, we could deduce things about how children learn to read the way they move their eyes. How, were, they, were their eyes kept open? Their eyes were always open. For how long? Uh, they were sitting in, cage, in chairs for these actual experiments for about half an hour, but the rest of the time they were in gang cages playing with their mates. Right, OK. If, if there weren't the moral qualms about the higher primates, such as gorillas and chimpanzees... Which we don't uh, would use you, at all. Would you if you could? No. Well, why but, do you draw the line? Because I think uh, we have to have a regard to the, um, to the level of intelligence of the monkeys to try and decide whether or not they are undergoing any suffering. So at what point in primates does it become acceptable? Orangutans? I, all great apes, I think, are out of the question. Right. And that is enshrined in law, as you know. Yeah, yeah but if it weren't enshrined in law, I was just investigating mm. the principle. Now, I would put a, a, a caveat on that. If it were shown to be the case that a particular very, very killing disease could only be modelled in great apes and people were dying in thousands, then I would relax that prohibition. Would you? Yes, because um, in that case, if I could be reasonably sure of uh, developing a cure for a disease that was killing thousands of people, then uh, that would trump, as it were, my worries about the cognitive state of the ape. Even so that's a very, very unlikely situation. Your argument is a utilitarian one, that yes. some suffering is justified for the sake yeah, of the I greater good. I didn't say anything about suffering. I think there is a problem here. People think the animals suffer. In fact, in all well, the experiments I John, did, they the had... law says the animals yeah. suffer. There's no question about whether animals suffer, and it's very concerning the law when does someone not, who experiments on the, animals... The law to, does not to be say that animals finish. suffer. Yeah. Come on, come on, you, yes, do allow me to finish. We, all the experiments we do are done down, uh, if we're going to be at all invasive, and by the way, 95% of experiments are genetic mo mo modification experiments, so they don't involve any sort of inv invasive uh, activity. But if we are going to be invasive, all the surgery is done under anaesthetic under closer supervision than many uh, human operations, in fact. Mm. And when we, when we put, as I mentioned, this cooling uh, plate on the brain, um, the brain has no pain receptors, and therefore it is not painful. If it were painful, the monkey would not do the uh, kinds of things that we train them to do, like tracking a moving target with their arm. Uh, they enjoy the game, just as children enjoy uh, uh, TV, you know, video games. And, uh, and, uh, and they, that, and they are not, you, they voice. cannot be said to be let's, suffering. Let's hear from Carla. You know, the, the problem is, how can you say that they're enjoying it when they don't have a voice? But my question to you, regarding the experiment with the, the vision and the monkeys, keeping the monkeys' eyes open, why... Not why, why, keeping the monkeys' eyes open, they were you, just normal monkeys. Why didn't you monkeys? use something like MEG, which is a, a brain scanner that is able, um, without using uh, animals at all, to gauge vision, um, cognizance, all sorts of things to do with the brain. And that is available now. But we also... <laughs>
we also use MEG scanners, we use fMRI, we use many techniques that uh, some people say could dispense with the need to use bunkies. However, uh, none of those techniques can match the complexity of the brain. No, I don't or agree. We can, have you spoken uh, to Professor you know Paul Furlong? Me? Yes, Professor, if you spoke, have you spoken to Professor Paul Furlong at the Aston Brain Centre? Uh, because, uh, because he, he can tell, explain quite a lot. There are a lot of things can you can do with Meg that you couldn't do with other techniques, and that means that less experiments are going to be necessary. No, there's a, there's as, another, we go, as we go on, yeah. more and more techniques there's will another, become There's available. another technique which, which has been spoken about on, on, the, on the radio this week, uh, which was a case, this is not yours, but it was a case of monkeys having their, their skulls sawed open and electrodes fitted in and their eyes forced uh, open for five days. And that was in the name of general research, finding out the effect of light on the eyes. Does that bother you, Tom? Well, so long as all the three R's, the refinement techniques, the enrichment techniques are there to ensure that animal suffering is minimised wherever it may exist. I do accept that there is certainly going to be some level of discomfort to animals, and I think we have a duty to ensure that animal welfare is prioritised. But I also agree. think we have an even greater priority to ensure that we allow people around to have the treatments tomorrow so that people aren't dying of cancer, so that people aren't dying of HIV. There are so many diseases which are scourges on humanity and we have a chance and most, a duty to try and prevent them. Most of, most of the diseases that are scourges on humanity, most of the things that people die prematurely of are things we can already treat and already cure. Children die for the want of mosquito nets that cost three or four pounds that would prevent them from suffering malaria. But as a society, we're actually, in a sense, we turn away from that. We're not doing all we can to stop human suffering. And yet somehow we're saying we have a moral obligation to inflict suffering on others, on animals. It makes no Give sense. Give us an idea of the stress you believe these animals Alistair, suffer. You know. uh, Alistair? Well, it, it's, the range is enormous. It is very disturbing to hear a suggestion that they don't suffer. For instance, some of the animals that are not being transported into this country uh, as a result of this recent story are mice genetically engineered to develop cancer. Now, I think everyone with any moral sense whatsoever feels an intuitive sense of revulsion. What can it possibly be other than wrong to create a sentient being that can suffer pain in just the same way as we do. It has the same nerve endings. That's why we do pain research on animals and actually inflict that suffering upon it. No, Morality is not we've arithmetic. Been, we've been talking about brains, but I would say it's no brainer that we can use animals in order to serve, uh, uh, to find an end to human suffering. All animals. My, um, not, no, 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 but what Professor Stein is absolutely right. You draw Listen the line. Listen to his hesitancy about crossing that line for using the great apes and only with great reluctance if it could be right. shown he said mm. that it would help yeah. my mother died of of severe parkinson's and i i promise you if i could have helped her not to suffer for the last 20 years of her life and i hope that that we get right perspective on this the animals that are used for preclinical trials that means so that you and i don't ever have to enter a trial on it because when clinical trials are made on human beings there's a chance that they even could suffer but there's a much less yeah, chance well, the, thanks to the preclinical trials that are done on rats Peter and mice yeah. and monkeys and i'm all for it and i'm very grateful professor stein is here to talk about it and show that it's acceptable peter what, what, why do you think this is not our right as a species well, first of all, we humans are animals. To suggest there's some great gulf between us and other animals is nonsense. Of course, we are more civilized and cultured and have greater intellectual capacities. But, but the, essence, <laughs> the essence is that we are part of the animal kingdom. And other animals have sentience. They can feel pain and suffering. Yeah. They have basic emotions. They have cognizance. You know, to treat them as objects for our benefit so is, I think, morally, is, is, is morally wrong. And the argument of the other Are side is, the argument of the other side is that suffering is justified for the greater good. Well, the logic of that argument is is that we should then experiment on humans because humans should be sacrificed for the greater good. Yeah. I don't believe that for one moment. No. I don't believe that. Well, can I, there's a lady, you've had your hand up for, for, for a long time. Hi. I have an issue to take up with you. You are talking about poppycock. You say there is no suffering involved in the experiments that you carry out on monkeys. From the moment these monkeys are ripped from the jungle, from the wild, the other By side the of this way, world, not the they're suffering all begins. They're all Excuse me. You have spoken. The suffering begins. They are injured in the process. Many of them even die in the transportation process, which can last up to 56 hours. And by the time they arrive here, they have suffered enough before the cruel experiments that you deliberately can, and intentionally afflict upon these sentient creatures even begins. Can I correct you? All begins. the monkeys and the that I use that you carried are, out, you denied access actually... to fresh water. And you talk about no suffering. 
These animals are all bred here. They're not ripped from the jungle, as you say. But bred in cages, and the way it, in confinement. In monkey farms. Social animals that are denied their natural habitat. We get but the, so question, the question is what... Right. 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 Tom, Tom's going to give us some perspective. Carl, I'll be with you in a second. You believe this is less this? than one in 1,000 animals is a monkey used in research. 95% uh, are mice, rats, fish and birds, many of which we would find on our dinner plate or in a trap. If you believe that animal suffering is the most important thing, why is it that you are not out campaigning against the millions, hundreds of millions of animals that we eat? But aren't they killed? Aren't they killed? Yeah. They killed yeah. Well, you are. You are. Yeah, but aren't they killed? Yeah. Uh, Ashley, go on. Yes, can I just say, Peter, you're starting to sound as though you're coming from a pagan perspective <laughs> with this moral notion that animals have a right and have a moral and a spiritual existence as well. And I agree with that completely. And that's right. And that's something that we perhaps aren't considering enough. Can I, can I that there is an ethical you? point here in the matter of belief as well as just a social point about um, about the way we experiment on animals. There's a morality to it that needs to be considered on an individual and global and wider level. Yes, okay. And uh, Carl, yeah, I mean, scientifically as well, just looking at the fact, um, you know, the, <clears throat> the animal model is flawed. And I mean, there are hundreds of scientists from top universities around the world who say that the animal model is flawed. And I'd also say it, the, the using animals as well is also economically more expensive. And our taxes are actually paying for failures. Nine out of ten drugs that are tested on animals successfully fail in humans. Okay, so we're but John, but this, is, but this is a very, wait, this is a very important point. John, could you do, could you have made the advances, the incredible advances that you've I done could without not have done so. animals? Yes, with, but we also use slide tech. rules. We also use slide rules for years, and now we're using computers. Can I just point start? finish? John, Can I just start? finish? Without being able to um, experiment on monkeys, I would not have been able to find the part of the brain that we have found that when we stimulate it, we can reduce um, many of the symptoms of Parkinson's disease which are otherwise un incurable. Now, I think that's a, a, an advance that we should be proud of, and it's because of the sacrifice of something like five monkeys. Now, I think that is right. worthwhile right, right, if okay. we care about our human brethren more than we do about animals. Back there, yes. What would you like to say? Let's move over to you. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Hi. It is completely acceptable when people say that uh, animal testing is not a good thing to do because it is a cruelty towards animals. But we also have to think that considering as a human race, and it was rightly said that we also are animals, why are we putting them in doing all that? And why are we doing testing on them? But if you're saying that we, as a science, we need to proceed further, we can't just keep the medicines as they are. But so they have to grow. So when, when, well, the, medi problem, when the science is growing, when the technology yeah. is growing, when we are discovering new and new medicines, why is no human coming ahead? And if we can sign a consent, sign a consent and say, do I'm <laughs> testing on me. No one is ready to do that. Je je OK, je we haven't heard from you, sir. Go on. Um, I think it's unacceptable initially to think that somehow animals don't have the same level of pain and suffering emotionally and physically in the same way that we do. Why is it acceptable to allow one animal to suffer so that we can live? We are all animals. Why is our health um, any more important than the animals? But Jay, you wanted yes. to come in. Go on. In oh. fact, I would suggest that the pain the animals suffer is very likely to be much more than the pain the human beings suffer because the animals live at the level of the senses. Their senses are highly accentuated. So the yep. pain they may feel will be much more, perhaps, than we can ever imagine. So I think we need to be very careful. In days past, we were doing experiments on human beings at the lower rungs of society. In days to come, I think we will also see Animal exp experimentation is a barbaric idea. As, as, intelligent, as intelligent, civilized people, Chris. you have a moral duty towards vulnerable animals. Chris. They can't speak for themselves. We have a duty to protect them. It's a duty of stewardship, of moral stewardship of fellow animals. Chris, 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 Chris. I'm very glad that Peter has introduced the word stewardship. It comes directly out of the Bible, uh, where, 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 God gives, where God gives the stewardship of the creation, including the animals, for shepherdly care in the hands of human beings. And that is the basis on which we can assert properly, with humility, that we, there is a priority, as the professor said, in our accountability and responsibility. And uh, the trouble is, when you take God out of the equation, you're, you end up with these inevitable 
unresolvable conflicts. I don't think there's anything well, unresolvable. Well, we be with that unresolvable <laughs> conflict <laughs> on a Sunday morning. <laughs> there's nothing unresolvable. <laughs> that, 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 that last one, Alistair. If, if you look at all, almost all the, the, the great moral problems, great suffering, yeah. it, they tend to rely on the notion that the suffering of others is somehow less important than the suffering of me or those I care about or others. Suffering is suffering. It doesn't matter who is suffering. We have a duty not to impose it on anyone so or anything. Okay, John. Okay, sorry, John. You're coming in. Last word. Go on. I, yeah, I must yeah. say, Say something to you actually very quickly. When I spoke yep. to somebody with, on, on Five Live about this during the week, a geneticist, right. I said, you, and experiments on dogs. He said, Yes, but it's not your dog, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was a moral abrogation. It's like seeing a child starving in Ethiopia. So it's not my child, John. It's still suffering, isn't it? Well, I, this, I, I want to talk about the suffering quickly, because one of, one of the problems that is, is occurring because of the effective ban on transport of animals that has been. Uh, has been achieved, I'm afraid to say, by activists, is that the animals actually suffer more in two ways. One, because they can't take the easiest and quickest and most least suffering route to wherever they're going to be transported, because they have to, these experiments will take place. We have to move on, and also they will and be... And also they will take place in, our, in countries that don't care about animal suffering as much as I do. Thank you all very much indeed, thank you. Um, now, if you've got views about that debate... Log on to bbc.co.uk slash the big questions, follow the links and you can continue the discussion online. Send us your views about our last big question, are many gods better than one? If you'd like to be in the audience at a future show, email audiencetbq at menton.tv. We're in Birmingham next week, Bury on April the 1st and after a break for Easter we are in Brighton on the 15th of April. Now, the classical Romans and Greeks had gods and goddesses for every aspect of life. The, the ancient Hindu religion tells tales of the exploits of many deities which still bear lessons for believers today. But Christians, Jews, Muslims are required to believe in just one god. Are many gods better than... <laughs> Good morning yes. again, Jay. How are Good you doing? Good morning. Hi there. Yeah, many gods better than one. Now, Hinduism is an incredibly interesting religion. Indeed. I've been read about it a lot over the last Indeed. week or so. Indeed. Very complex, very flexible, and very many people believe many different things. Indeed. You see, some, some of whom believe in many gods and goddesses. Indeed. You see, Hinduism is sometimes misunderstood to be mm. a polytheist religion. Believe, mm. means believing, believing in lots of ultimate realities. This is a contradiction in terms. You can't do more than one ultimate because it's not ultimate enough. Hinduism has never been a polytheist tradition. It has always been a very mature, pluralistic tradition. Not many gods, but many ways to relate to the idea of spirituality. It can incorporate monotheism, means accepting one supreme personality. It can incorporate non-theistic approaches as well as non-religious approaches for making spiritual progress. This is called spiritual democracy. And the lovely word is religious pluralism. Many pathways for